Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Um, in my last video I showed you how to download uh, climate model data from the SIMIP5 project and I mentioned I was going to show how to visualize it and I haven't done that yet so we're going to do that today. Um, so I'm using R and I'm going to assume that you were already able to download the data and you have it saved somewhere. Um, the NetCDF data. So here I'm going to show you how to um, open a NetCDF file, uh, get the data out of it, and plot it in a map so you can actually see the temperature projections um, from the climate models. So here we go. I'm going to start from a new screen in R and I'm going to assume you know the basics. Um, so we're going to go ahead and set directory just copy this so my data is saved here and here you can see all the data that I've downloaded um, in the past these are all um, climate model data and today let's work with RCP 4.5 data. So here we go. And inside of that, you can see that I've downloaded um, data from all these different models. So Access, CANESM, um, GISS, IPSL, these are all the data that I've downloaded before. So we're just going to work from one of these. And I'm working from an old code that I wrote. It's here in the left. This um, app is called Sublime. It's really good to write coding. And this is largely based on the work by uh, Professor Bartline from the University of Oregon. Um, I'll link this uh, page at the, in the comments below, in the description box below. So back here, uh, first thing you want to do is you're going to need all these libraries. Um, most of these are for plotting later on. Um, the only one you need to actually open the NetCDF data is um, this one, NCDF4 library. Um, if you have that, you'll be able to just open the data, open the NetCDF data and all that. So the first thing we're going to do is open it. And let's work with... So... In here, you're going to put in the file name of your NetCDF file. And if you're in the right directory where you saved this file, um, that's all you need to do. Just put in, in quotation marks, the name of that file, of that NetCDF file that you downloaded. So now you have it open, and you need to get the variables out of it, right? So first, let's get the longitude variable. and this function is common for all these extractions is nc variable get. So you're getting a variable out of your NetCDF file. And here you put nc, um, nc in, which is where you open your data, and then you're extracting the longitude, right? And if you want to know what variables you have as an option, you go here, print nc in, right? So this is all the information from that NetCDF file. And here it shows that you have all these variables, right? Longitude, latitude, time, and maximum uh, air temperature, because that's the data that I downloaded, right? Okay, so you already got longitude out. And if you want to see, so the dimensions of the longitude variable is 192, and that's going to vary by model. So for access, uh, 1-0, this is the longitude dimensions. And then, of course, you need to get the latitude. Uh, we'll do the same thing, except here we put in lat. And then you get the dimensions of latitude. So access 1-0 has 192 longitude point points, 145 latitude points. And next, what you need is the array of temperatures. So you're going to get that data um, and see it. 
and for this case it's called tasmax because that's the data that i downloaded you can also download um, mean temperature minimum temperature um, there's other variables you can download and i showed that in my previous video so once you have that really that's all you need um, but i'll show you one more i'll, I'll post this code online so you can see it but another useful thing is to learn how to get the attributes of the variable so let's say you want to know what unit the temperature is in so you do nc at for attribute so you're getting the attribute and here you put task max um, and units so what this means is so previously to get the variable you put nc var get to get the attributes, do nc at get, and this is the name of your file, the variable, and the attribute you want to get. And you can see the unit. So temperature saved in Kelvin. Um, to just to show you that you can do this, you can change the temporal rate into Celsius uh, by subtracting two hundred seventy three point fifteen. And let's see what the dimensions of the array is. So dimensions is 192, 145, 1140. So how it works is your temporary, so your temperature is saved in a three-dimensional uh, file. You can just think about it that way. It's not really like that. But imagine here you have um, latitude, longitude, and temperature goes out of the screen, right? So you have this box. Then each slice is at each time point. So you have 144 time points. And the time unit is in days after the first unit, you get, the first date. So you can also get the units for the time. Again, it's nc attribute get ncn variables time units. There you go, day since that. Um, yeah, and I downloaded monthly data, so we're gonna have one slice per month for 95 years. And that's all the data you need. You have the longitude, latitude, and your temperature array. So now you're done, you can close it and we can start mapping and an easy way to map is you need to get a slice right you can i mean you can uh, plot three dimensions but I'll show you how to plot it in two dimensions so we can see it in the map so you get a slice of your array all um longitudes, all latitudes, and the first timestamp. So this is going to be January, right? And then you do... Um, this is how that page that I showed does it. Um, it's an easy way to do it. There you go. You already have a map. You can visualize your NCDF data. You can kind of tell this is South America, Australia, um, Africa. This is a temperature, but it's kind of hard to see. Um, so I wrote this code here when I was in grad school. And I'll share that in the description box below. And really, when you get this from the description box, all you need to do is copy this, like I'm doing right now. Paste it right here. So what we did was define a function called met map CDF temp. And then that's the function. What it does is fix or shift the longitude so that it's in a more conventional mapping way, I guess, with America in the middle, kind of. And then it kind of changes the temperatures and adds uh, legend, so it's easier to tell. Oh, and country boundaries, because right now, you can't really see where everything is. So that's what this function does. And all you need to do is the function name right here, and then it requires these variables as input. Good thing we already have those, lat, lon, and taz 
um, it's the name I gave it before, but in our case, it's 10 slice. And there you go. We have mapped it. Um, these are maximum air temperature January 2001. Not really a projection, I guess, because it's in the past. But you can get a temperature slice of any time point, right? You just get the array, all longitudes, all latitudes. And to do a little ground checking, we can see that January is winter in the northern hemisphere and summer in the southern hemisphere. So it makes sense that it's warmer South America, Africa, and Australia, right? But to double check our work, let's get it from June. So um, it should be warmer in the northern hemisphere, right? So we'll do the same thing, map it. And there we go. We have warmer in the northern hemisphere, a little bit colder in the South America, southern Africa, and Australia. So there you go. Um, this is pretty high level. I'm assuming you know how to work in R. If you have any questions or you want me to dig deeper into any of these um, functions or how I wrote this function or how to get more information out of your NetCDF files, uh, just post it in the comments below and I'll, sorry about that, it's my fault. And I'll make another, another video to answer those questions. I hope this is helpful. Um, let me know what else you need and I'll work on making a video. Have a good day.